Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the ultimate LTN guide with Dwiz. So first of all um, we'll hop into the settings. Uh, in here we have kind of a lot of settings to go over. First of all the dispatcher, if you turn that off it will stop generating new requests and I think those that are already on the way will uh, get delivered but uh, it will stop uh, any new ones getting created. Update frequency uh, kind of is self-explanatory as well as updates per tick. I'll just leave that as it is standard wise. Uh, the message level is uh, whether you will get detailed messages, notifications, errors and warnings and off. I usually tend to have it on notifications first, go to errors and warnings when the LTN system is kind of neatly developed and then later on you can turn it off completely. Especially if you go for uh, another mod called LTN Manager, uh, which is quite handy. The message filter timeout doesn't really matter a lot, the GPS tags uh, those will appear in the messages we'll see in a second. I'll leave that on for now, but later on I'll turn it off as well, just because the messages get way longer, but this way you can click on them and s get a mark on the map where the stations are that are in this message. The debug log, of course, you can turn that on if you want to get further information on that. Then the request or the thresholds in general. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> as like one of the main purposes in the beginning is OR, and I tend to use one four trains for OR, I usually set that to 8000 as that's the amount that goes in one one four train. Of course that's uh, item specific due to the different stack sizes. But with a stack size of 50 and a 1-4 train, you'll have a threshold of 8000 to get full trains. I don't set this uh, schedule circuit conditions, but of course you could do that uh, if you want to set up a s another uh, circuit condition. Uh, the depot inactivity is fine with 5. The stop timeout, I would actually uh, turn that off by setting it to zero. Uh, this way the trains are not forced out of a station even though they might have still items in them, which will result in having items on the next delivery in the same train, which is extremely annoying. Then the delivery timeout is kind of the same thing. I'll usually just set that as you can't set it to zero. Um, as far as I know, I'll set that to something like 12,000, something like that. I mean, 600 is uh, 10 minutes, so 12,000 is way more. <laughs> That's all we need to know. Uh, delivery completes at requester. Well, that is something you can do. But especially for beginners, I wouldn't recommi uh, recommend it. Um, the, it means just that the train will start a new delivery uh, or get a new delivery plan when it is finished uh, with unloading at the requester. Finish loading is always a good thing, I would recommend that. Um, depot reset filters. Well, I don't really use filters on my easy to use uh, blocks blueprints, so I'll just leave that on. The fluid removal, I never had any problems with fluid trains yet, so I've never touched that. The default network ID is minus one, that means all the networks are active. Um, so zero, one, two, three, all of them are included in minus one, so just leave it to minus one. Then the LTN combinator for 1.1 is the 
current combinator for LTN that I use. I would highly recommend that, of course, if you would uh, want to use uh, my blocks blueprints, you should definitely have that installed as well. Uh, well, you can do that, of course. And here uh, you should also have that activated. The provide request type there you can set whether you want to set uh, stack thresholds as I do or standard thresholds no actually I do thresholds but you could also do it with stack thresholds then you would have to cal calculate a little less uh, show network ID yes show priorities yes min max train yes limit trains yes uh, locked slots per wagon as I said, I don't really use locked slots or uh, filters, so I don't have to put a mark there. And we can disable warnings in a special station if we want to. Then the LTN manager, well, I've left that to 10 and it was fine. So actually, let's confirm that and let's go on with, first of all, the depot. So actually I just placed down the uh, blocks blueprint uh, of a depot. Actually it's a 1.4 depot. I've developed uh, other depots as well, especially for 1.2 trains. But in the end, if you are using 1.4 trains and 1.2 trains, you can simply go for uh, one of these, or actually, actually multiple of these later on and set all of the trains to those depots and it'll be fine. First of all, let's think about what we have here. We have, I think it's something like 50 stations. Actually, it's 52 uh, because of, well, we have a cold supply as well in here. So this is this one and well, as it's mirrored to the other side, we also have a cold supply down here, as you can see there. And then we have 25 stations per side, so that means 50 LTN depot stations. Let's go into one of these uh, combinators real quick. In there, you'll just set it to depot, set the encoded net network ID, and then, very important, uh, to have, where is it? Ah, uh, well, give me just a second. <coughs> First of all, let's get midday and then let's get all the technologies as this is just a tutorial world. Um, there they are. You'll have to get green wire and connect that up. With ALT you can see what is inside a combinator and other stuff as well. So you'll have to connect it to the stations, but not the stations themselves, but the green lights that uh, mark out the input. As it also says in the description on the right, uh, left is output, right is input, and the station itself is the station itself. Um, I tend to name them all the same so that's something you can see best on the map view I guess they're all called depot 142 you can actually just copy them with shift right click and paste them with shift left click but it doesn't really change anything because they are already having the same name then after you've connected the first one just connect the green light to all the other stations of course you can hop onto um, a power pole in between or multiple and then just go on from there. Make sure all of them are connected to the green lamp. Of course do that on the other hand side as well. Really important so it will work. Uh, also don't forget uh, these jumps over here for example. And then we of course have a cold supply for all of the stations over here. So the coal is coming out there, going through there with underground belts and getting loaded into the uh, locomotives of the trains. 
So I think this will be it for the depots. If you have further ca further questions, uh, just feel free to ask them down in the comments. Uh, let me get rid of this one real quick. And then uh, let's get back here. Uh, next up is, of course, the provider stations. Let me create something quick. So let's say you have this small mining outpost here, then first of all it's wise to use a balancer. Uh, you can find multiple books of balancers on Factorio prints or on YouTube in general. Uh, I would really recommend getting uh, one book each, one for blue, one for red, one for yellow. Those will come in quite handy. Here we have a 6 to 8 as we always have eight inputs for our stations, which I will show you in just a second. So first of all, of course, place down your station, name it to maybe Iron Mine 1 in this example. Uh, of course, you can also use rich text symbols in there, uh, which makes it <coughs> kind of a lot of easier. Uh, to notice which station you are talking about later. Then next up is another mod that I really like to use as I had problems before with LTN without using these. So those are called modular chests, uh, but there are also different uh, mods that basically do the same thing, but those worked best for me. So I'll use these. Uh, so first of all we'll have these stations, then of course we will need to power the inserters and then as soon as we do that uh, we'll make sure to link the chests to these power poles. So in here as soon as we have for example let's grab some iron ore, uh, well we can't do that here, uh, but let's just grab maybe some belts. And then it will show us 300 belts are in there. Same goes for, of course, ore and other things. Next up is to create the rest of the station. Uh, let me do that real quick. So now that we have that, uh, next up I'll, of course, link those together. Here you can see the station. You can just use uh, blue inserters, stack inserters, or later on you can also use stack filter inserters if you want to make sure that only the things uh, you want to load get loaded but actually it should work this way nonetheless if you absolutely want to make sure you can uh, read out the train or the, the, the signal from the LTN network um, with circuit conditions and pass that to the uh, inserters, but it's easier if you just, just don't worry about that, so let me hook that up quick. Well, as soon as this is hooked up, we can pick an LTN combinator. Of course, you can do that as well with standard combinators, but it's way easier if you use the mod LTN combinators. First of all, hook up the power poles to the green lamp, so the signal what is in the chests gets uh, well transported to the station input and then of course uh, go into the LTN combinator as this is a provider it provides items to the network uh, we'll set it to provider then the network ID we can leave to minus one the threshold is gonna be 8000 as I said uh, 50 times 4 times 40 is 8000 so that's what you want to put there provide priority you can leave to 1 I get to 0 I guess then the minimum train length and the maximum train length you should set to 5 as only one locomotive and four cargo wagons will fit in the station uh, nicely then next up is the limit trains if this would be a station coming off from your network, from the grid, right into here and going right back in, I would set that to 1. Uh, but as soon as you get a stacker down, 
well actually you should also uh, heavily recommend it is getting these signals in front of and behind of the station but if you get down a stacker so something like this uh, let me build that real quick so if you get one of these stackers down uh, that's the main purpose is to have a space for the trains that come in here to wait while the train that is currently in here is getting loaded uh, when you use stack inserters later on don't have to have huge stack uh, huge stackers but if you don't uh, use stack inserters and in general you should get a stacker especially for the mining outposts get a stacker and don't worry about it anymore so now we have one two three four so that means we have actually four places for the trains to go plus the station itself so we can definitely set a uh, set set that to five i guess that's quite fine and then here we'll of course go to the, uh, the network back into the network or the grid and here we'll come from the grid so that's actually quite fine and uh, next up is of course a requester station so well let's actually get this one out of the way let's look on requester stations so now i've already set up the station first of all of course you'll have unloading inserters of course again those chests and then uh, green wire linked to the power poles and then to the green light of the station the input and the LTN, uh, LTN combinator as well so first of all we're gonna tell it to be a requester up here then the threshold if we want to for example get ore in let's call it base ore one uh, maybe iron ore would be better do that if you want to <coughs> we'll leave the request priority to zero and tell it to be a five long train and as we don't have a stacker yet tell it to limit out at one so next up the request this output output is to be calculated and to do so it's very important to know what you're doing so first of all you'll have uh, on these chests you'll have on the right uh, attack storage zero out of 768 that means that there are 768 slots in one of these chests so <coughs> what you'll have to put there is 768 times 2 and then times the stack size of the item you're dealing with in this case 50 and then you'll have to put a minus in front of it so in this case 768 times uh, well let's actually first of all put iron ore in there 768 times two chests times a stack size of 50 is 76,800 so let's put minus 76,800 in there and then we're perfectly fine of course you will have to or you could put a stacker you can connect it to the grid and everything and then after every load or unload you should basically get a belt balancer to make sure it's loading fine although these chests kind of are the reason uh, or not th there aren't the reason they are there to uh, minimize the effort of balancing as they are balancing uh, over the cargo wagons in here because they are one entity containing 768 slots uh, which is exactly the same as you would put down s uh, four times six chests individually okay uh, of course you can adapt that for all the other stations one two one 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 six i don't recommend using one six trains though for me one four 
for ore and plates and stuff like that. And one too for things like maybe advanced circuits, science, processing units. That works fine. And then for the fluids, it's quite similar. It's actually a lot easier. So for fluids, uh, all you'll have to do is instead of the inserters, get the stations next to uh, get the pumps next to the the rails. Uh, and as soon as you do that, uh, they will also show the symbol here, here, and then, uh, well, to set it up, uh, well, let's sec let's actually set the combinators up for an LTN provider. First of all, one four trains, each uh, fluid wagon contains 25k, so that means you're having uh, four times 25k. It's 100k easy like that you'll have five and five for the length and well a limit of one except you have space for stackers then you can do more than that of course you'll have to put those pumps in for every cargo wagon uh, I think two pumps per cargo wagon is actually enough as it also tells you it has a pumping speed of maximum 12,000 per second so that means in less than two and a half seconds the uh, train is empty. That's actually fast enough. Uh, but you should definitely set some storage tanks in there. I usually put uh, these four for one wagon. So if you're doing a one four train like that, well now I'm in the whole station again. Of course you should have uh, these all connected with green wire to the input and then uh, you should also interconnect them with um, pipes. Actually let's connect these so we get the signal passed over. Uh, well let's get some pipes like that. I would really recommend doing that. And then, uh, well, let's finish it. Is that the correct space though? No, one higher. Well, it's not ideal the way I put it. So let's get it out of the way again. This way, so they are in the middle. I like to have it this way. Uh, it should work otherwise, but it's easiest like this. Uh, so we've already set up the combinator as you can see and then last thing to do is to hook up the green signal. This way uh, we'll have as you can see on the right a threshold of 100k, length of 5 and a uh, maximum uh, a limit of trains uh, 1. Okay so as soon as we turn that around we'll get uh, the requester station, uh, well that was actually the provider station, like that is the provider station of course, and if we then turn them around so they unload the trains, they'll of course get a requester station, and then we'll also set the threshold to 100,000, and we'll leave the rest, and let's say for example you're requesting oil. Let's think about how much will fit in these. We have 25k in here, that means 100k in here, and times 4 is 400k. Of course we'll have to set it to minus 400k as it's requesting it. And as soon as you get the 400k in here, uh, the whole signal will turn to zero as minus 400k plus 400k is zero. Okay, so I guess that shall be it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, then please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye.